La 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 la, it's Ruby time on the Lyric Room. Yeah. Guys, guess what? It's time for the Lyric Room with Ruby. I just said that. <laughs> but today we're going into Volume 5. Yay! Because Volume 5! Woo! Okay, to, to even start, I just want to know, what are your guys' thoughts on Volume 5? What are your thoughts on the soundtrack of Volume 5? I would love to know. It's not right, it's why. Even his Y agrees. Poke the slipper. Poke the slipper. Yeah. Well, hello everybody. My name is Kat and welcome back to All Ages Geek, a place where we unite the geeks of all ages with one thing and one thing only, and that is fandom positivity. Today on All Ages Geek, if you hear that we just recently also got a hamster, and he is chewing on something. He's chewing on something. But yeah, today on All Age Geek, we are going to be going into the lyric room and we're going to discuss all of the songs from volume five of Ruby. And there's a lot. There's like seven of them, I think. But as you know, I talk a lot. Yeah. And the other thing is I like to be able to talk about the lore that goes on behind them, really go into the nitty gritty of it and be able to like, in a way, just give my thoughts on it because volume four is still my favorite Ruby volume. I don't know about you guys, like what are your favorite volumes? Um, volume five was was good. It wasn't it wasn't as powerful as like volume five, volume four, volume three. Volume three is when it was like crushed you and destroyed you inside and just wanted to rip out your guts and say, screw you, I'm Ruby. How you doing? But yeah, <laughs> let us get started because we're gonna be starting with the volume five intro because I actually skipped over the intro due to spoilers. I didn't want to get spoiled because usually, sometimes, not all the time, I can't say usually, sometimes the intros do contain spoilers. So if any of the other intros do contain spoilers when we do go into them in like future volumes, just let us know and we'll totally like check them out with you guys. But anyway guys, we're starting with the intro. I don't know what to expect and my hamster is just crawling on his, yeah, he's just, he's just crawling. Theon's just shaking his head like, nah, Theon's my guinea pig. We got a big family here. But anyway, guys, uh, for Triumph, I think Triumph is the one that's in the intro. What we're gonna do, we're gonna look into the intro, then we're gonna find the lyrics for it, and then go from there. Well, let's get started, guys. Let's get into the lyric room. And I skipped over this how many times? So I think that, okay, there was Crow. Yeah, back in show. Whoa, look at her. Oh, I like that. Oh, let's transition to, oh! Ooh! Ooh! I like that. Hey. How do you do that? I have to learn. I'm your girl! Haha, <laughs> girl. <laughs> Basically, crow throughout the entirety of the volume. Ooh, that was nice. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like. Hey. I love that. I love that. This is yeah. That would have spoiled me. That would have spoiled me. Ooh. Yes, queen. Yo, this would have spoiled me so much. Ooh. Yes. We will endure. Oh, that's so. That's so. Oh my god. That's such a passionate take on that. Oh. Oh. This would have spoiled so much for me. That would have spoiled so much because that was the entirety of Volume 5 right there in a nutshell. The intro. Usually with OPs, like they kind of hint at it, but this one would have spoiled me so much. Especially at the end when you saw them all reunite and then attack Salem. I mean, probably my original thoughts would be like, oh my god, the girls are going to attack Salem. But yo, that was a good OP though. I liked how when they were, it was like, that was very anime. I liked that when it was like, they're back to back and then they look at each other like um, Yang and Raven. That was so anime. That was legit anime. 
I mean, think about it. Do you think that Ruby is an anime or do you not think it's an anime? Again, I personally think it is because it has like the, some of the tropes from anime. It's very inspired by, it's heavily inspired by anime. But again, it's not made by like a Japanese studio. So again, that's when people say that it's not anime. But again, that's another discussion for another day. But yo, that was a good OP. I like how it kind of like transitioned, um, like how Team Ruby it, like went from different like flowers and everything. Um, and it actually showed like what they were doing throughout volume five as well. Um, what I would love to do with you guys again is like I would love to start doing another rewatch-a-thon with you guys on Twitch when it comes to Ruby in general because it's such a good series and also like to be able to miss something, you know, like you can easily just miss something. And then when it comes to the foreshadowing, I want to be able to pick things apart because we've done rewatches before throughout volume one. But again, I would love to just rewatch this again because it's like it's so much different when you're watching it like weekly like I do rather than just binging the whole thing. Like I don't want to binge the whole thing on my first watch, like watch along with this because if I do that, then it's going to be like if I go through all of it, I'm going to miss so many important topics. Plus, if I rush through it, it's not like it's not like a shonen anime where it's like shonen animes, it's like fight, 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 and you can binge through it because you want to get through the fights. This is more like lore, 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 fight, and all the lures happen within the fights and then happen within the dialogue, so I don't want to miss anything. So when it comes to watching the entirety of Ruby, I would love to do rewatchathons, probably more towards when we're caught up, because there's still so much we have to cover, like so much, like in general, there's not a lot. Like, right's why? freaking agrees with me that's right but anyway guys let us now listen to the full version i believe that was triumph i don't know how jeff does it to be honest like how he does that on the guitar like god bless him for his talents but anyway my friends let's see we got yes the triumph all right so the triumph featuring casey lee williams by jeff williams with lyrics so guys let's get reacting yep this is it this is a little longer version though oh my god i like this fan art Hey. How, how do they do that? Mm. Hey. Oh. How do you do that with a guitar? Oh my god, that is amazing. Ooh. Oh, I like that. Ooh, I'm missing the dodge. Same <laughs> Oh. It's so inspirational. Every freaking song. Aww. Yes. Yes, Queens. I love this is all of them so much. Yes, two years. So inspiration, I'm telling you. Hey, hey. Touch the sun. I like that. Cause they're not gonna give up. That's what I love about them, you know. Oh, I know nothing about music, so. <laughs> hey. Ooh. I like that. I really like that. Okay. See, here's the thing. It's like they're almost lifting you up with the lyrics. Oh, dang. I'm all a girl, but I'm also a gun. Hey. I like that. Aw. It really looks so cute in the fan art. Aww. That's so good, right? That we're heading for the sky. Hey. Look at the drums. See, I like that we won't waste our time on the on serious yesteryears. I like that. Cause they're like, we're not gonna give up, even though even though something may be really hard. And it's like, we're not going to waste your time freaking crying over something. We're going to do something to change. Oh. Yes. 
Yes! Oh, I love that because they're creating their own future. Yes, please! <laughs> Blake looks badass. She's like... How do you do that? That's magical. <laughs> wow. My favorite line is definitely when they're saying they're not going to waste their time crying. You know, like, don't cry over still though. You know, just keep moving forward. You know, keep moving on no matter what. You know, that's like the main point of this entire series is just keep moving forward. Oh my god. I think every OP is like this though. See, I love that. Dude, don't waste your time crying about the freaking past. Hey, hey, hey. Nice. Wow, oh, I like that at the end. So with the triumph and everything, if you really think about this from a perspective of the girls in general, like Team Ruby, they've been through hell. <laughs> can, we just, can we just talk about those? Since, not even that, like, since they were young, even before they were Team Ruby, they've all been through hell. And then the fall of Beacon was kind of like the pinnacle of the hell that they've been through. And it sucks to see them have to go through this. So in their in their own like perspective and what they're speaking about, like especially when it's like don't waste your time on yesteryears and shit like that, like they are actually saying like, yo, don't waste your time crying over things. Don't waste your time crying or complaining about the past because it's never gonna come back. It can haunt you, but don't waste your time complaining about it, you know? And that's like what I took away from those, li those lyrics is like, okay, instead of us crying over it, instead of us being upset about it, let's work together to make a better future for ourselves. This is what this represents. And it's so, oh my God. And it's so true because of the fact that they, together as a team, yes, they, they've grown together. They've been through, so again, through hell and back. But at the same time, they all have their personal struggles. Just like all of us doing this. Again, this is why Ruby is such a good series because it relates to those personal struggles. And this could be about Team Ruby, this could be about Crow, this could be about anybody in general who's really just saying like they've been through something, but we're not gonna cry about it because the past is over and it's time to freaking get the balls to get over it. And it kind of shows us that yes, we've all been through a lot in our lives. Like I don't really know anyone who really hasn't been through a lot. I mean, even probably the Kardashians have been through a lot and they're the Kardashians. <laughs> I'm kidding. But no, when it comes to this, it's a very humble take on saying tough love, you know? And tough love does seriously exist because without it, then people would just be like, oh, you know, we expect the world. We expect the world to be handed to us. We expect everyone to treat us like with kindness and this and that. And that's not the world, especially in the world of Remnant. They're not going to be like, oh, we're so, we're nice. We're all friends. No, it's not gonna be like that. Everyone wants to tear each other apart in the world of Remnant. That's just how it works right now. That's where how their society is right now. And for Triumph, for the Triumph, how it's representing is like, okay, okay, I know it's hard. I know you're going through a lot of BS right now, but you got to get up and you got to put your past behind you and you've got to take a stand and make a future for yourself. Yes, it can haunt you. Yes, it's bad. Yes, bad thing. Like, look what they went through, okay? Use them as an example. But you gotta be, you have to have the courage and you have to have the strength to keep moving forward. And that's why I love this song. But we have a lot more to review. So again, I would love to know your guys' thoughts on the triumph and what you took away from it. Cause that's personally my view on it. And I freaking love that view. But anyway guys, let's keep moving forward. All right guys, so now we're gonna be reacting to Ignite, which is featuring Casey Lee Williams and Lamar Hall by Jeff Williams with lyrics. Ooh, I like that a lot of people work on those songs together. It just gives more meaning to it. But as we see in the freaking thumbnail, mm -hmm. look who it is. It is freaking Yangy Wangy. Look at her, it's Yang. She looks so good. Like I'm trying to imagine her with like freaking short hair. I think she'd look good with both long and short hair. I mean, legitimately, I would love to see that. I mean, if the Ruby characters end up like cutting anything, like with her hair or anything, I would love to see that, especially with Yang. Like, just give her a little different style. I just want to see what she looks like. But again, like Yang is so like protective about her hair. So again, I don't think that will ever happen. But oh my God, I'm excited for this because she's awesome in this. She looks so badass. Look at her. Oh, hug her. 
I love her. But anyway, guys, it's Ignite, and if this is as badass as I burn, then I'm gonna freaking love it. So let's get reacting. Oh. Oh! Yo! Hey. Yeah, head for beating. Oh, yeah! Oh, I love her. This music! I like that. Now she's gonna mourn you? Girl! Oh, she is relentless. Yes! Yes! I love this. Oh my god! <laughs> Suffers from judgment and pain. Hey. Oh my god, I love that. You know, I love that. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> I love her confidence. Like, this is the level I'll get you want to be on. Ooh. Girl! Yay! <laughs> oh, I love that. Like, even this music, it's very jazzy, too. It's like badass, but jazzy. It's a lot different than I Burn. Personally, this fits her more. Oh! Oh! Which you miss with my family, you're dead to me. I feel like she like I tell, she'd like literally kill anybody who like put a finger on Ruby. I'm afraid if Ruby ever gets in a relationship. <laughs> yes. Hey, can you? Yes. Hey. Oh. I love, oh my god, this, this fits her so well. Look at it. The Unicorn or Army of Sane. What an interesting life. <laughs> it's like this is a mixture of angst, confidence, and freaking badassery right here. That's like basically how to, if you put Yang on a pedestal and you were to describe her, those are the words that you want to use. Or just, uh, just fire overall. I just look at her the picture, I'm like, yo, girl. <laughs> Oh! I wanna try to wrap this, oh my god. Hey. This is so hard to do it for me! Hey. Alcatraz, oh! The baddest looks ever? Yes! Oh my god, I love the rapid part. Like, just, just give me more of that. <laughs> does he, does uh, Lamar only do, like, more of, um, just Yang's, like, song? Boom. <laughs> I love it, but oh, you're mistaken. <laughs> yes. You are the one and only badassery. You gonna love her. You wanna accessory that's badassery? You go and get some Yang. You want to go on fire, you get some yang. You want to get that confidence that puts everyone else in their place, you get some yang. She tells it how it is. This is why I love her in general, because I think, like, in general, when it comes to society overall and human beings, a lot of people tend to not say it how it is. And I, I honestly think if a lot of people were more blunt and honest about things, then the world and society would be a much better place instead of people are just keeping it to themselves or not talking about things. And that's what I really like about her because she tells it how it is and if, if people do not like her, she does not give a crap. And oh my, I just, I love her. Like over the last few volumes, I have learned to respect Yang so much. 
I mean, in the beginning, I liked her, but I didn't like her as much as I do now because I think it was when she was going through those PTS moments, PTSD moments, like you really felt what she was going through and like her mental health, how it was like, like that was the subject that you were focusing on. Yang is just upset. Yang is not herself. And that's when I really connected with her because of what she was feeling. And again, when you when you have those character driven stories and you feel what the characters are going through, again, what I always say, that's what makes a good story. So with Yang, you know she's that badass girl. You know, and the thing is too, even in volume five, what really struck the core with me was she was shaking her hand. Like her hands were shaking. She was in pain. Like you're not not in pain, like like physically, but mentally in pain. And that's something a lot of us can relate to if there's something that is like overall like a trigger for us it's it's very upsetting to like to know people have to go through that there's some things in life that i get upset about there's some things in life that you may get upset about and overall you have to admit to yourself that's fine you know it's fine if you have to go through it. this is like something that you have to overcome like with yang in general she has to overcome her fear of going what happened with with uh blake and adam and as we saw at the end of volume five she kind of slowly regained more of her confidence. It wasn't what I liked about that direction too, especially what I really appreciated in volume five. It wasn't just boom, she got her confidence back. Boom, she was right back on track. No, it wasn't like that. We saw her at the end, like towards the end, when she got the relic. That was a very human moment. She literally got the relic and cried. She was alone after talking with her mother, with Raven. She was alone and cried. We don't really see Yang cry that much. And we really don't, I feel like she's that type of person. And I say person and not character because again, this is more human. This is a much more human series than like a lot of other series. So I, why I say person instead of character is because you can relate to her. I can relate to her. All of us can relate to her. So when she cried, it was so human because she like was hugging the relic and fell down to her knees. It's like when you fall down on your knees and you can't stand up because you you feel weak or you just like you just give in at a moment, she needed that. And I felt like that was a very very important moment for us to know in general as for Yang's character, we have to note that that was that was a very important moment because it showed that humanness. It showed that as someone as confident and as strong as Yang, she can cry as well. And oh freak, I just, I can't, there's certain scenes that just get to me, like, you know, it's like, don't even bring a volume of three, I swear, don't even bring that up, please, it's like, bring it up, freaking end game with me at a certain scene, don't bring that up, but no, again, this really, f this fits her as, like, really well, because again, even though she was going through PTSD, even though she's going through those mental health problems, she still has the, that confidence, and she's regaining it slowly, but at the same time, she is, kind of showing us, you know what? I'm still I'm still badass. I'm still the great person that you know and love and I'm here to show you that you can be too. Cuz these songs speak volumes, you know? They're not just like, "Hey, here's a song about a character." No, this is about a character, what they're feeling, with their lore and what they may be feeling at a certain moment and in general how Yang is is like she's confident, again she's badass, but at the same time she really she really also has those flaws and she has those moments of downfall that, you know, again, it's okay because not everyone can have that confidence 24/7. Not everyone can be that flaming fire that's in her heart 24/7. It's just not going to happen that way. And you may feel like at certain times of your day you may feel like you have to be confident, you have but sometimes you you need to take a break. You know, sometimes you need to realize that it's okay not to be okay. And again, Yang showed us that. Like, even if you are the person that always seems to be okay, it is okay for you not to be okay sometimes. So that's that's my thought on this song. Again, it really captured both of those sides of Yang. The badass side and also the side of her showing that, you know, it's okay to, like, be angry and it's okay to be angsty. It's okay to feel the, these like, those emotions. So that's what I love about it because she shows us a lot. But anyway, guys, we have a few more songs to react to, so let's keep moving forward. The Path to Isolation, featuring Casey Lee Williams by Jeff Williams, with lyrics. So as we see, best girl, queen girl, best girl, right there. Yes, she is on the freaking thumbnail, and I'm not going to be okay with this. I'm scared. I want to press this, because even the, even the freaking fan art, no matter how beautiful that is, the fan art for Ruby is freaking beautiful. I cannot wait to catch up, because as you guys do know, we're going to have a ton of Ruby sh like shows covering Ruby, such as um, fan art reactions, 
the crack things that you guys wanted me to react to. There's going to be a lot. There's going to be so much because, again, I love this series and there's a lot to cover with it. There's going to be the books, the anthologies. So if you have anything that you want me to send me, especially on um, patrons out there, just let me know because there's freaking a lot. So... Yeah, but I'm scared to collect this. I'm scared to collect this. This is the best girl. As you know, she is my favorite character in Ruby. Uh, when it comes to picking my favorites, it's really hard, but I, I usually like the characters that, again, have so much lore to them and show us a lot, like, that we can really relate to. So, but anyway, enough stalling, cat. You know darn well you're stalling because you don't want to see what happens to the best girl. By the way, guys, path to isolation. Let's get started. Starts. It starts. With the unexpected loss of something dear. Stop! I'm sad now. The warmth Look at that, that, that her own voice goes off. Comforted and cradled. Comfort and cradled. Stop it! Voice, BB. And in its place there's nothing oh! Just an endless empty home The light that shone, the way is gone mm -hmm. the darkness takes control Bitterness and anger Oh God, stop! Are quick to fill the void The path to isolation oh my God. Is litter with the dreams that lay destroyed. The frig! The dreams that lay destroyed, don't do that to me. We got some. The cold seems to grow in my soul, it's consuming me. Aww. Confused, and I'm losing myself in the storm. Growing jaded, being pushed, being pushed. right there. Good. That is good because you're changing character development. Oh my god, I love her. <laughs> oh my god, see, again, these lyrics go into her innermost mind. Like, Inflicted pain. Oh, I'm really concerned now. I'm really concerned now. Oh my God! Yes. Okay, this is the this is the moment where she's beginning to change. Is that how it ends? Okay, oh my god, there's so much to talk about. That one thing that really concerned me was she's saying self-inflicted pain. So that means she's hurting herself. But that can mean so many things. But this is also showing a bit of like depression too. Does Weiss have depression? Like I'm very concerned now. Like the song made me get my claws out. Oh my god, my poor bean. 
So here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Again, we know Weiss is a very complex character due to her songs and due to her like looking into the mirror and really not knowing who she is anymore. But that's not really necessarily a bad thing because we all get like that sometimes. You know, we, we once build ourselves up to be somebody. Like I did this, I did this once before. Uh, my job before doing YouTube and doing Twitch and everything in general, before All Ages a Geek, I like, like the story time. Story time with Kat, but no, here, I kind of like in a way conform myself to my job that I had for five years. I was working with books. I was working in like the literature field and the production field for five years of my life. I was, that was my life. You know, that that's everything that became me. I started acting like everyone in that community. I was somebody who I wasn't, you know, I was letting people step all over me, letting people kind of control me, letting people say like, you have to be this way. And again, this was way before like YouTube in general. Like, again, I was still, when I got really serious about YouTube, I kind of was at the same time doing my job, but then I got really serious about it, then I quit that job, then I did YouTube full time, and that's why 2018 was a mess, because Kat was a freaking mess with her mental health. So, like, I understand where Weiss's perspective is coming from, because at times, even now, sometimes I'll, like, look in the mirror and be like, wow, who am I? You know, like, who was I a few years ago? You know, like, I, w I was not who I am today. I was a totally different person. And it's like, we all get like that. And why she's saying, who am I? You know, when she's questioning that. It's such a powerful moment because when you question yourself, that means growth is going to happen. You're going to grow into a totally different person. You're going to grow into somebody who you feel is a better version of yourself, a stronger version for yourself. So it's okay if you're in that that moment, like just like with, with Weiss, like it's okay for her to be feeling like this because this is the bridge between I am Weiss, I am conformed Weiss, to I am now becoming my own person. But she's in that bridge, that, that linking moment where it's like, okay, well I'm kind of still that conformed Weiss, but at the same time, I don't want to be her anymore. So where does that leave me? So she's going to have to work on herself a lot and possibly maybe even throughout volume six, we're gonna see her work more on herself. Again, I think her being reunited with Team Ruby will help her out a lot. I mean, I mean, like she was so much happier when she was with them, but she now realizes who she is, you know, like not 100%, but she realizes who she is by herself. That's why I'm kind of glad the girls got separated because they all began to learn about themselves and was able to heal with themselves. And now they're going to be able to heal together because they're all back together again. But again, she's such a complex character because she went through that abuse from her father, from all, mainly a lot of people who viewed her as like the heiress of like the, the heiress of um, the entire Snee company. Like imagine having that all riding on your shoulders, you know? It's a tough thing. It is so tough. And a lot of people do go through this in life. They are conformed to be somebody they do not want to be, or they maybe at first want to be that person because someone feeds them that type of lie. They feed them, like they brainwash them. And Weiss was brainwashed. That's why she is such a good character because we see her coming from conformed snappy Weiss to now like, oh, I'm going to have friends. Oh, I'm going to care about other people rather than myself. And that's again, why I freaking love her. But again, I want to know your guys' thoughts on this. And again, we still have so many more songs to actually react to, which is now we're doing Smile. Aw, what a cute name. So let's move on. Let's react to Smile. Ooh. Ooh. Is this about... Is this Ilya? Is this Ilya's parents? Oh my god, is this Ilya? This is little baby! Look at the fingers! Little baby Ilya! Aww. Child, our daughter. Ah! Sit while we talk a while. Aww. I love Ilya with a passion. talk about when it comes to her. It's interesting like the 
music. Yeah. What? Whoa! This took a turn! That took a freaking turn. That took a turn from yay happiness with a lot of revenge! Even though I like how they did the guitar change too. Oh. Yo. I kind of get like Robin Hood vibe. Cause like let's take it back and like give it back, you know? Huh. So, like, oh my god. Oh my god. Aww. I would have loved to learn more about her parents. Let them know better while your revenge is sweet. Oh my god! Ilya! It's so interesting to see the different POVs from the Faunus and Silas is why I love Ruby because it goes from everybody's different perspective. I love this. Because again, something with anime, what it needs to do is like go from other people's perspective. My Hero Academia is a really good anime to do that, like they change different perspectives. I went in here thinking like, oh yay, it's a bit smiley, and it's like, <laughs> but yeah, just wipe up the blade. It's fine. Oh, wow. Oh man. All right, time to discuss, and I'm gonna probably talk a lot about Ilya in this moment because I love her character. I love everything about her because it was like she was that type of character where which she's like, I don't know what else to do. I don't I'm lost. I don't know what else to do with my life. And it's like that is so powerful because when you're caught in that like moment, it's like a catch 22 where it's like you you have you don't know what else to do. You're like you're forced into this type of lifestyle. And Adam was not helping her. And again, she was going through those feelings of having feelings for Blake. She was going through those feelings of also being jealous and then also being able to follow the man who she was jealous of because she thought Blake liked him. It was just, it was just her overall, her as again, they're young adults, they're not adults, they're young adults. We have to always keep this in mind. It's like for her to have to deal with that alone, you know, when Blake left, that's painful. That's painful. So I felt for her character. I just wanted to hug her and tell her everything was going to be okay. So for this song, I, like I went in thinking like, oh, it's gonna be a cute song about like, oh, this is gonna smile. But no, if you if you heard the lyrics, it's basically like, yeah, smile and then take what you need, let them bleed. And it's just like, oh, leave them to bleed and just like revenge is sweet, great, great. But I'm glad that Ilya did change. You know, like she had that. Again, she had that character moment, that character arc where it's like she loved Blake. She want, she was like, I want, I want to like be with you, Blake. But then she was again dealing with her personal struggles, dealing with who who she was, and then dealing with all those other shizzles that this poor girl had to do with it alone. So I love, I love that. I love how it was like that change. You know, it was just over a few episodes, but like to see that growth. That's what I loved about it. So I'm hopefully we get to see more of Ilya. I mean, in general, she, again, a very interesting character to me. She is in my top five favorite characters. And I really wish we get to see more of her because she's so intriguing to me. Even her design and everything. Like, I feel like they could do so much with her character. Even if they want to make shorts about characters, like not even just the character shorts, but like maybe like a spin-off type series. 
I would be hoping to see one all about Ilya, like, to see what she went through. Because there's so much lore for that. Like, even to add more to the Faunus' lore, like, there's so much lore with her. So that's something I'm really hoping when they do, I mean, I don't, I don't even know how long they're actually going to be going and running Ruby series. And, like, the volumes, I don't know how many volumes until, like, the series is over. But, I mean, even, it, even like, during the run of it, they can even work on spinoffs. And I would love to actually see a spinoff of Ilya or any of the other characters that, like, really have rich lore behind them. So, again, I would love to know your guys' thoughts about Ilya. Another thing, I would love to know more about her parents as well. I mean, we only, like, discovered a little bit about them. But, I mean, like, I would love to know more. So, I mean, like, any role players out there? <laughs> I always do this. Any role players out there? If you guys role play as Ilya or Ilya's parents or anything in general, I would love to hear your guys' head cannons. Again, All Ages Geek is all about role playing. Like, we love to hear about role playing stories. We love to, I mean, we even in our Discord server, if you're a Patreon or a Twitch sub, we even have our own, like, role play going on. And that's something we're really passionate about. Because with me, in general, I've been role playing for longer than 15 years. And I've, I've had the same characters for over that long and they just mean so much to me. So I know when people care about characters, like I know you guys may care about your characters or how Rooster Teeth cares so much about the Ruby characters. I would love to hear your guys' stories and your own roleplay stories, even, even if you have your own OCs, your own characters in general. But man, I did, I did not think going into this, I did not think it was going to be like, oh, you like revenge and smile for that. It's like, no, it's just a smile. It's going to be good. It's, it's, yeah, but anyway guys, we have we have a few more to react to. Now we're going to do All Things Must Die. That's exactly what I want to hear. That's everything I've always wanted. All right, so let's type this in, shall we? All Things Must Die. There goes my search history. All right, so who the frig is this about? No, oh, it's about Raven. Yes. Again, Raven is also in one of my top five, not top five, top ten favorite characters. She might be up there. I mean, I hate picking favorite characters because I love them all so much. But, like, again, there's something about her that really intrigues me. But, hey, let's see what All Things Must Die is about because, hey, that's, that's really what you want to hear in your YouTube comments. This is really what you want to hear. Let's get started. Oh, hell. Oh, this piano. Oh no. Oh, this art of her, holy crap. Oh my god, that's creepy. It sounds like a creepy like haunted amusement park. Like I'm not a character. Day by day it's Whoa, dude. that with her voice. Life is just oh, a this is the, oh, I love this type of music. Yours is Yo. Bloody, Bloody Evolution. That's referring back to volume one. This world Whoa, freaking trills. Yeah, oh my god. All things must die. Oh, okay. This is the end. Here's where okay, it just goes into this. Let's just get. Wait. Oh! Oh my lord, Raven. It's like, this is a great, I like how it like started as a lullaby, like in a way it's like, I'm singing a lullaby, I'm singing a lullaby, like. Oh god. I can't believe the guitars are like, yeah. Again, she's so complex. This is why I like her. Holy crap. 
just like, yeah, oh my god, like it started out like a lullaby, and like a creepy lullaby, and then when it's all like, Ugh! Oh. Pray for mercy, oh my god! Holy crap. Oh wait, that's so dark! That is so dark. That's a, that's like the lullaby. I'm scared. They like switches! I feel what's really sad too is like you know, even like looking into her eyes, you know she's been through so much, even at her time at Ethan. And I don't know if she feels I know she felt like Oh my god. She felt used by like Austin and everything, but like uh What do you guys think about her? She went through her Thank you, that's that's really what you want. Oh my lord. But again, I really don't consider her much of an antagonist. Yeah, but I wanna know what you guys think about her because I, I do like her. And what I mean, like I don't consider her an antagonist, I consider her more like an anti, like in between, you know? Or somebody who's like doesn't even want involvement, just wants her her own tribe and everything. So as we saw at the, the end, holy crap, it just blacks out like that, like... But yeah, as we saw at the end with Raven, we saw a little different side of her. She wasn't necessarily like, bitch, I'ma destroy you, like that scene with her and Cinder, like, bitch, I know something, mm, girl, you don't even know what I know, oh, girl, you don't even know what you're talking about, oh, bitch, I am one step ahead of you, I am freaking one step ahead of you, and then it's all like Cinder's like, oh, girl, don't even make me freaking laugh, and then, <gasps> Nani, what just happened, and now, Psh, bitch, I told you, I I told you, I was one freaking step ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And then here comes their amazing fight that was so extra and I freaking loved it. It's like, put that salt on that wound. Put that salt on that wound. Just freaking attack each other like that. Just do it. Like, I love it. I love that fight and I love how it was so salty. Like that level of salt, I love it. They were both savages in that moment. They're just like at each other's throats. Like, God dang it. They're one of the best fights. Again, I enjoyed that so much. As you see, I'm fangirling over it. But Raven is so complex, like after that whole scene and her reuniting with Yang and everything, it's so powerful! Because she's not just like, oh, bitch, I'ma leave. She's all like, I'm sorry, and then leaves. And that's what volumes, because again, what I kept saying is volume five kind of represented forgiveness and like, again, volume four was the dealing with it, the healing, the moments of like wondering who you are. Volume five was more focused on let us forgive, let us go through this grief. Let's forgive each other. Let's forgive ourselves. And when Raven said that, that proved to me that one of the main topics and themes in Volume 5 was forgiveness. So, I mean, in Raven in general, a lot of people just think like, oh, she's a bitch because like what she did to Yang. Now, I agree that she should not have done that. She basically abandoned her and caused all of her abandonment issues. But I always wonder if there is another reason, if there's a reason that she left. And I'm always thinking like it kind of like maybe there is a redeeming arc for her. For her saying sorry, I really feel like that redeeming arc is going to be more not like flat lines, but more like this. It's not gonna be like, oh, it's gonna happen like this right away and great, we're, we're Gucci with each other. It's gonna be more like just slowly showing a redemption. So hopefully maybe in volume six or whenever down the line, maybe she does return and we get to see a different side of Raven and then they get to work on more of their mother and daughter relationship building and everything. But oh, that was, that was, oh, that freaked me out. Cause I love how it kind of sounded like a lullaby, like, oh, we're a lullaby right now. Okay, great. We're just a creepy lullaby on a carousel. Great, thank you for taking me to the amusement park, mom. Thanks. Thank you. But then the other thing is it kind of also felt like when the guitar started going like this, it's like out of nowhere, it's like, oh, that big switch. Um, it was like, whoa, this is like a murderous intent thing. Like, oh, I want to kill everybody. Oh, that's my intention. I mean, again, that's really what you want to hear every day of your life. All things must die. Thank you so much for that reminder, Raven. God bless. God bless. You're really the MVP. Real MVP right here. God bless. All right, guys, so we have a few more songs to react to, so let's get started. Oh, it's, is this another... 
Blake and Sun song? I like that. Again, if it's again, all ships are valid. Whoever you ship is fine. Another thing is if you ship them as more of like kind of like a friendship, that's also fine. Like me, huge Bumblebee fan, I stand. But when it comes to her and um, Sun, I will admit that there is that chemistry there. But at the same time, he is such a good friend to her. And that's what I really love. So let's see what this is all about. Oh, From Shadows Part 2? Yo! Here comes the music again. Oh man, this is bringing back my freaking memories. Hey. Oh, that's so true though. Oh. I like that. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Oh, I like how they mix like the colors to them. Yeah. Oh, yay. I like that because again, it's getting over the past. I feel like that was a really... Oh, I love that. A light in a new mind, a new state of mind. I think I've also kind of... ...represented in letting go of the past. I like that. Yes! Yes, Blakey Wakey! Oh! Yes! That's powerful. Again, it's like forgiveness and also a mix of like getting over the past and Blake had the development. She got over that. She got over fears like freaking yes. Hey. Oh. Yes. Ooh. Why have a face? Nice. <laughs> hmm. Hey. Hmm. Yes. I love that. We'll climb. Oh. And the thing is, too, what I realized is Blake used her fear and her pain from the past to, like I said, enlighten new minds. Like, she didn't, again, she didn't cry about it anymore, she wasn't afraid anymore, she helped others through her pain. And that's one of the most, one of the most powerful things anyone could do. So God bless her for that. Aww. I like that. Is this strong with the drums in this volume? Aww. 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 God damn it. <laughs> I love that. You gotta heal now, you know, you, you gotta, you need to, oh my god. No, oh, Blake, it's so weird. You represent so much. You help so many people. Oh. Healing from the past. It's one of the hardest things people could do. Say, so rise up from shadows into the light. Like, rise from your demons. I like this one. Oh, that was good. So, we're going to talk about Blake and how she kind of evolved throughout. I mean, think of her back in Volume 1. Like, if you talk about all the character development, you will see that there. 
So back in volume one, you felt like she was afraid of something. She was afraid of showing that she was a faunus. And then throughout the other volumes, you started to see her insecurities, her fear, her anxiety. I mean, what Adam put her through. I mean, I don't even know as much as what he put her through. But again, if we ever see any flashbacks to see, and like we see enough because we see how much is inflicted her and made her in pain. Like we've seen that much. And that is what kind of makes us like scared to see how much Adam has truly hurt her. So like moving forward with this, she kind of shows us that side where like we have to, we all may go through something in pain in our past, but we have to learn not right away, but slowly, just like with Yang, slowly learn to live with it. Slowly learn to like live with those demons, but then use those demons to help other people. Because as you saw throughout volume five, she kind of stood up against her fears and her demons and she put others first and she realized this is a cause that we have to stand by. It may be scary, but we have to stand by it because it's something that she was passionate about and something that she knew that was right. So she put all her fears aside and showed that courage, showed that confidence that she may have learned even from Yang and Sun and everybody. She showed that side and said, you know what? I'm not gonna be afraid anymore. And she said, you know what? I'm taking a stand for myself. And she realized that yes, it is like it's hard when you have to deal with it all alone. Yes, that is hard to do. But when Sun said that, when Sun said that to her, and he said like, "Oh, you know, it's like it's a selfish thing for you to be selfless like this and not realize that your friends are here to help you," that kind of woke her up. That really woke her up. And like that's why throughout the volume five, she was much more outspoken. She was much more like, "I'm going to stand for what I truly believe in," as Blake Belladonna, not as somebody's daughter, not as somebody's like love interest, not as somebody's like obsession not anything like that she was finally taking a stand for her and when you realize that when you realize that it's time for you to take a stand for you you will realize that it's like such a overpowering thing you like feel this empowerment over you and you're like wow like i could take out my whole life i know what i want to do and i'm gonna do what's right for me and that's what she like think about what she went through if you think about it she was in a freaking abusive relationship and that's why i cannot like adam I cannot like him because I know that is what they're hinting at and what they're referencing, what he put her through. And I will not, I'm not going to like a character like that because that's like, that's wrong for me to like a character like that because it's like, I cannot like somebody who puts her through that. Like even, even if he has like excuses to say that he did put her through that, it's like, no, there's no excuse to want to put someone through that. So that's why I can't really like him. I could try to understand what he's going through and could not try to understand him as a character. But in necessarily, I'm not going to like him as a character because you saw not even just you did not see what he what he did to her, but you saw it through her pain and you saw it through Yang's PTSD. You saw what he did to them. And that's something that I can never like 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 as a character. So with me and Adam, we're going to be on like like iffy type of terms. But again, that's fine because characters are not necessarily made for everyone to love. And again, if you like Adam, that's fine by me, so long as you're respectful for everybody else's opinions who do not like Adam or like, again, everybody's opinion is valid. But that's again, that's why I cannot like him because to see what he put her through based on her reactions of it, that's something I cannot like ever support. But anyway, guys, we have another song to react to. So now we're going to be moving on to... All oh, that matters, and this is the last song in the in the in the volume. All right, let's see what it is. There is there is Blake and there is Yang. Is it a Bumblebee song? I stand, I stand, I stand. Okay, just just let me know. I want to get like a large cut out of them and just. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, so let's get to this. Oh my god, I ship them so much. Literally, like I ship you with Blake. I have to find Blake. She she ran off somewhere. I ship you so much. It's chemistry. You just you just see it. Good ship. Good ship. I stand. Anyway, guys, all that matters. Oh, my babies. I love them. <laughs> this piano. My eyes about to like, pop out like. Never thought that you would stay forever. Never asked you to commit your life. But I can tell you in my heart, I never thought you'd up and leave me without a trace to lead me. Stop. And now you're staying. Look in 
just believe your life. Oh my god! You lost, you found your heart to pin down. I never know if you'll come through. Then you appear together. We're here. Stop. That's all that matters somehow. Stop. My babies. Ah! Thought that I could pull you from the shadows. Maybe help you find your wings and fly. Oh, that is too precious. Oh my god. But you're a path no longer that I travel. <laughs> the more I'm just defeated. My past mistakes repeated uh -huh. I'll risk it once again to have you near my side I can't! Another chance to let you just destroy my pride Oh my god! Let's get married! <laughs> like kind of like I'm mad like she's like I was like mad but it doesn't matter anymore that scene in volume five. To discuss this, now if we're gonna go back in volume five, or let's go back towards the end when they reunite, but even before that, when Yang sees Blake, you see that look at her eye when she's like, oh my God, Blake's here. Oh my god! Like, in the moment, because it's like, what better moment when they're freaking fighting someone and they can't even reunite at this moment. It's like, she was all like, holy crap, and they just look at each other just like, oh! And that's when you know! That's when you know that there's some kind of chemistry between them going on. But also, like, you could, you could tell how much she means to her. So, like, oh god. <laughs> so, like, another thing that the song is kind of representing, it's like, you know what? I was pissed. I was mad. I was furious i was just really just angry and angsty because that's yanks you know she was yangsty but then when she saw blake she was all like right now it don't matter right now we're gucci right now we're just gonna hug we're gonna hug it out we're gonna cry and everything's gonna be fine i wonder like in between volume five and volume six they kind of worked it out i would have loved to seen that but like that's how you know. That's literally how you know. Again, even if you don't ship them, you have to, even if you ship them and you see it from Bumblebee's perspective, like I do, but if you ship them more as like a friendship and it's just like they care about each other, that's fine. Again, I am not biased at all. If you do not like their ship, I am fine with that as long as you're respectful. 
But like when it comes to them in general, like at that moment, like it was so powerful because they reunited, they looked at each other just like, <gasps> cause it's like Yang wouldn't know what to say at that moment. They're fighting. Like if they maybe reunited in a moment where it's just like, oh crap. And then psh, maybe you're like punching each other or something. I don't know how they would have reacted if there was not a fight going on. They were risking their lives. So they both matured over more so Blake, I would say. Blake more so matured over the course of volume four through volume five. So I mean, like she's much more like, you know, confident. But like when it comes to Yang, I mean, Yang was more like she opened up about her emotions. She showed a different side of, of herself to us. And that's what I liked about that. They kind of in a way switch positions no pun intended, they switched positions when it came to like her being like herself, like how Yang is more confident and, and Blake is more like the scared one. And they kind of switched that, which I really like because Yang showed us the scared side when she was admitting to Raven, okay, yeah, yeah I'm afraid, but somebody has to do it. I love that scene, by the way. Oh my God, that's so powerful. But when it comes to Blake, she showed that more confidence. Side. So they're going to like probably like in a way throughout volume six show a different type of bond with each other which i'm really looking forward to because again again i do ship them i really do ship them but at the same time if you don't i respect that i respect any ship i respect no matter like if you don't like my ships if you don't like like how i think about a character i'm fine with that because i accept your opinion and i think that's more that's what the ruby fandom needs to do more of it's like accepting each other's opinion and i've noticed that some people can be very strong with their opinions and just like go on and on and on while well, you're just like you know what here's my opinion i respect yours so respect mine again i think that's that's what the fandom really needs is to be able to talk like human beings and not just attack each other online on tumblr especially on tumblr on twitter anywhere it's just just get along just talk about it have a conversation you know a voice chat is a click away or if you can't do voice chat have a mature conversation online you know it's like Nobody is going to 100% agree with your opinion, and that's fine. Nobody's going to agree with my opinion 100%, and I accept that. No matter who you are out there, if you have a different opinion than me, I accept you because acceptance is a huge part of what this fandom is about. And that is why I love Ruby, because there are a lot of great people out there who show that side and show that acceptance. And that's why I'm so glad that we can cover a lot of things in this fandom, because it shows that side, that accepting side. Because, again, every fandom has a toxic side to itself. But again, the way you deal with it is just say, I accept your opinion, so accept mine. If they keep going on about it, just ignore. Ignore, block, repeat. And if you don't want to block, just keep ignoring and minding your own business and sticking to your guns about it. Just, just stick into your own opinion, you know? If you like a ship, it's a ship. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy. If, if a character makes you happy and you love that character, then that makes you happy. Then you be you. That's what I always say. But anyway, guys, I would love to know your thoughts on the lyric room because these are great songs, very emotional. They really like pack a punch with the action, but also the emotion to it. You could tell so much heart went into this. And if you want the unedited, uncut episode, be sure to check out us on Patreon. That keeps our dreams alive, but also it allows you to get extra content. In 2020, you guys will be getting a ton of content. And I mean, a ton. We're covering lots of fandoms in 2020, but also you're going to get a lot of content that you guys be asking for we also have community day going on every single wednesday if you are part of the discord um you guys can access that through patreon or also on twitch and that's basically we all just come together we hang out we check up on each other and we have voice chats and we watch things together like movies or things that you guys request on patreon there's a lot of fun just going on but anyway my friends i hope you have an amazing day you see weird you see wonderful you see awesome Till the next video I don't know what I'm doing with my hands right now, because I'm from New Jersey and this is how we all talk. Until the next video, embrace your fangirl and your fanboy every single day. Bye guys!
Geeks of all ages, stand up and stand that fandom.